Welcome home. This is Audio EXP for August 24th, and the episode's title is I Want That Snail. Swab Entertainment won the RPG Publisher Spotlight this month. The interview is alive, and Rob was kind to us. We find out that he was angry after doing all that work on D&D 5e for Wizards of the Coast, only to be let go, and that he took some of that anger to his grim dark RPG Shadow of the Demon Lord. Since then, he's also published the less grim but still dark Shadow of the Weird Wizard. And since things come in three, and it also seems to be new edition season, I asked him what his plans are. Firstly, he clearly stated that there are no plans for a second edition of Shadow of the Demon Lord. I'll quote him, I'm not in the business of selling the same thing to my customers over and over again. Well, there you go. Instead, Rob says, we will get Abaddon, the Angel of the Void. And this is the first podcast ever to reveal that that this upcoming game, characters will be survivors in a space station in which demons have breached through the gate. Rob says it will be ultra nasty fun okay okay on the topic of tiring fun let's briefly talk about the madness of the edible festival season which your podcast hosts currently find themselves in and actual play as live shows which have been featuring in the fringe this year firstly bronwyn and i are still alive this is not a podcast from a zombie and if it was then it would be Bronwyn, because Bronwyn ran out of B12 days ago, and that is the vitamin you need to think, to regulate your DNA and produce energy. So yeah, it's quite important. Don't worry though, she is recovering. Unfortunately, none of the actual plays of tabletop role-playing games that we got to at the Fringe this year were very good. It's a real challenge to do an hour, and only an hour, of entertainment with a tabletop RPG. Do you think it's impossible? Can an actual play be done in an hour, where the hour starts with players sitting down and the concept of the game and characters described? We also did not get to Chaosium's Edinburgh Festival Fringe Show, despite talking to them about it. That's a blow. And perhaps there were good actual play shows this year that we didn't see or happened at on different nights of the shows that we did get to. We can't be everywhere all the time, but we did try. It is 100% related to this very fact that Geek Native published its first ever review of a bottle of wine. Not any old wine, I'll say, but Iron Maiden's Darkest Red. It had a special wrap on the bottle with Eddie as a samurai warrior and I bought it mainly because it was getting lots of negative reviews. Eddie, by the way, is the band's skeleton heavy metal mascot. It turns out that if you ask me, it's actually quite nice wine. I'm no wine expert, but I had it with some steak and it was a good pairing. By the time I had written my review, the star rating on the wine seller's website had picked up enormously as well. It turns out that the early negative reviews were from fans hoping for a collectible bottle. But not me, not dozens of others. I drank and then I recycled the bottle two days later. Sorry, Samurai Eddie. And hopefully it will be before December when I next get to sit down with a glass of wine. In December, I plan to have a glass in my hand for secret level, though. The studio that did the amazing animated short stories anthology Love, Death and Robots has been hired by Amazon to do, that's right, an animated short stories anthology. The twist on Secret Level is that each story is based on a computer game and there are games like Pac-Man, The Outer Worlds and Unreal Tournament. But there's also Warhammer 40k and Dungeons & Dragons. Both of these tabletop games do have computer games after all. The trailer looks great, but it's heavy on the tease and light on the story. I'm sure we'll get another one. Games Workshop said that their own in-house team worked closely on the project, well, on their story part. 
and that was to ensure that it was lore correct and on theme. And I think that was a good decision by Games Workshop. Expectations must be kept. Maybe I'm having a negative podcast, but I had high expectations for Blood of the Blood God. No, legally, this is nothing to do with Games Workshop and Chaos Gods. Blood for the Blood God is Gunship's new single, and the music video was released this week. It's directed by the talented Seth Ickerman, and I had high hopes for it. All the ingredients for greatness were there. I'm afraid what we got was some AI-generated fractal art, and while that's legally safe from Games Workshop's attack lawyers, I was underwhelmed. There is an RPG coming, for which people clearly have high expectations, and that's the Ars Magica Definitive Edition. It has thousands of people signing up for it at the crowdfunding alert page for when the campaign goes live. Ars Magica is a pioneering tabletop RPG that introduced troop-style play and a unique magic system, making it sort of a landmark game in sort of narrative-focused storytelling. Other TTRPG news this week includes drive through RPG's Cosmic Horror Sale. And if you've been trying to review Edinburgh this month, then Cosmic Horror feels about right. But surely we're still miles away from Halloween when the sale would have been better timed. No, I disagree. GMs need time to have read the books and have thought up adventures and prepped. Mid-August is the perfect time to offer discounts on bundles on games like Hellboy, Regency, Cthulhu and Never Going Home. The Friday RPG Roundup from the site also had the news that Goodman Games will be rolling out their organised play which will delight Dungeon Crawl Classic fans. And Pazio also rolled back their controversial changes to the community use and fan content policies. That seems to be a rule that RPG publishers need to learn. Once you set out rules for the public to follow, then it's probably a bad idea to change them, even if your finances are tangled up. Now, we're pretty much got to the bundles deal, which is the end of the podcast, and I've not mentioned anything about the snail temptation. No, it's not food. No, it's not a cute anime character toy or a jelly cat to hug. It's a xenomorph snail that got my attention. Take the head of an alien from the series and blend it onto a snail. Make that large enough and robust enough that you can use it as a garden gnome. And that's what's singing a siren song to me. I can't even fit it in my flat. I want to hide it in the garden that I share with a bunch of elderly neighbours. I'm a bad person. In bundle news, the bundle of holding has the world's largest bundle again. That's a misleading name, kind of. The bundle actually has a huge mega dungeon in it and other similar products. Start now and you might still be exploring it through Halloween. Sadly, the last bundle to mention is Murgy Baker vs. Cancer. That's the same Murgy Baker of Lumpley Games. It's a generous bundle with over 200 bucks of savings and it costs you only 25 bucks. As usual, I don't like the idea of making affiliate commission on these sales and since the site pops in the tracking link anyway, I'll find a way to donate any sales profits back. On that note, keep safe, be well, but don't explore the garden. And I'll see you next week.